Hi everybody, and welcome to our second IoT session at the AWS Summit Online. My name is Boaz Zinnemann, I'm a developer advocate from Tel Aviv, Israel, and I'm going to be your host in this session. This session is going to focus on IoT and edge devices, and how can you bring cloud connectivity and intelligence to the IoT edge. And we are talking about this topic because there are now billions of IoT devices out there. We can find devices, IoT devices at the edge, at wind farm and on airplanes, in medical equipment. In my house, there are dozens of devices right now as we speak. Smart light bulbs, my car is connected, factories and many, many other places. And some research expect that by the year of 2025, there are going to be 75 billion devices out there. And there is a bit, very big challenge to manage those devices, and there is a very big challenge to control them. And this is what we are going to talk about in this specific session. So IoT devices are powered by embedded processors called microcontrollers or microprocessors. Microcontrollers are usually much smaller. You can uh, find them uh, by, uh, they sometimes called MCUs. And usually this is a single chip <coughs> with very simple, low memory, limited power processor. You can find it in smart bulbs, you can find it in uh, locks, in vacuum cleaners. Uh, my TV has a, a microcontroller that allows me to control the TV remotely uh, with uh, some IoT setup I have back at home. And they are very, very common, they are very, very cheap. Uh, you can find those devices such as uh, ESP32 and other models uh, for just a few cents or few dollars, depend on the exact components on the device. And when you buy them in bulk, they are extremely cheap, so you see them everywhere. Microprocessors uh, or MPUs are usually slightly bigger. They provide uh, some uh, computing uh, processing power, uh, real computing processing power, some memory, some storage, and you can actually run more software on top of them and they have much, much more powerful capabilities. You can find those uh, microprocessors in, in, in industrial machinery, in cameras. You can buy a Raspberry Pi for a few tens of dollars uh, and uh, play with it. This is a, a microprocessor that can actually do a lot of things on the device itself usually much more powerful than microcontrollers. And collecting and analyze, analyzing data from all these devices uh, can be really tough. And uh, those devices uh, can produce a lot of data and you're running into all kinds of challenges in terms of uh, sending this data to the cloud, storing this data uh, for a certain amount of time. Not everything is important. You want to analyze, you want to pre-process -pre uh, the data before you're doing that. So for example, connected cars can process terabytes of data for every hour of driving. You don't need all this data. And this is a very big challenge. What do you do with it? How do you handle uh, this data? And which data do you want to store? And which data you can just analyze and throw away? And when you start uh, working with edge devices, you need to take into account several limitations and you need to find solutions for each one of them. So let's talk about some of these limitations. There are three laws that you should take into account. The first one is the law of physics. The law of physics is talking about the fact that connectivity, for example, is not available everywhere. Some of those devices can be in planes or underwater in oceans or in uh, mines and other locations when co where connectivity is very, very limited. And you should build a solution that will take this limitation into account. Another low physics factor is speed of light. In many cases, you need to make local decisions. You can't wait for your data to reach the cloud, being processed there, and then get an answer that will be the base for your action on the edge device. For example, connected cards once again, if there is an accident and you need to make a decision in fractions of a second uh, what to do to break, to open airbags, you won't be sending this information to the cloud waiting for the response. You have to do it locally because double, uh, data can travel, uh, the, the speed of data uh, is limited and you won't be able to get this response on time. So law of physics are very, very important. Law of economics are important as well. In some locations, data connectivity is expensive. So you need to take into account that you can't send everything you collect on those devices. And sometimes it's much more economical to take the data, process it locally, and just send the process data 
to the cloud for additional analysis, for decision making, or anything like that. Next one is the law of the land. In some cases, you are limited by local laws, privacy laws, for example. So if you're running medical devices at the edge, you can't store all the data coming from those devices at the cloud before, for example, encrypting it or just uh, removing private information from this data before moving it on. So you have to take into account those laws, especially around privacy, security, things like that, before you're taking the data and shifting it to the cloud. And you need to make the decision, where do you want to process your data? And you need to take into account all the laws we've been talking about, other limitations, and AWS provides you the platform to take this decision with a lot of tools that support any decision that you might take. So you can take this data, process it, and store it at the endpoint, you can do it on local gateways that are connected to the internet, but they are local and can connect with dozens, hundreds, tens of thousands of local devices. You can work with appliances. You can work with infrastructure providers. You can store this data or act upon this data at uh, hundreds of pops we have all around the world. And you can, of course, send it to the cloud. The biggest advantage of the cloud is that this is probably the cheapest and most available storage and compute power that usually very lacking at the edge. And when you need more power to process your data, when you need to collect data from multiple resources, multiple locations, usually you're going to store it eventually on the cloud. And to allow you to do that, AWS provide you several different tools some of them designed for microcontrollers like uh, Autos, Free Autos, uh, which is an operating system that you can install on microcontrollers and it will allow you to connect securely to local deployments, usually running on microprocessors, all directly to the AWS IoT cloud. Uh, you can run Free Autos, you can use our CSDK. Most of those microcontrollers support C, so you can install our CSDK. It's a tiny piece of software that will allow you to write your own software on those devices. If you want to use any other Autos distribution, you're more than welcome to do it as well. Microprocessors, we provide you a software called AWS IoT Greengrass. We're going to focus on this solution in a few minutes, and you can install this software on your devices. That we, this will allow you to connect locally to your edge devices, other microprocessors, microcontrollers, and of course, connect securely to the AWS cloud. If you don't want to run uh, Greengrass or you don't need to run Greengrass, you can run one of our AWS IoT SDKs on any microprocessors. It supports several languages. Uh, so this is a very common solution. Just write your own solution. The SDK will provide you the wrapping, uh, some uh, shortcuts that will allow you to connect easily to the platform, to the AWS uh, IoT solutions, uh, will wrap your MQTT communication, take care of security, and many other advantages. So you can choose whatever solution you like. And that allows our customer to achieve business outcomes with IoT. And this is a very important part of adding IoT capabilities to businesses. And we see customers reaching revenue growth by introducing new services and new business models based on IoT, or improving their devices by introducing new software, new capabilities to existing hardware. So think about it. You have hardware out there at your customer plant or house or anywhere else. You can constantly improve it by introducing new features uh, like in connected cars or speakers or TVs that improve this product over time. And of course, when you have those devices, you're collecting this data from your customer, you can better understand your customer and create better relationships with those customers by understanding the data, understanding what your customer needs, which features are the most popular ones, where do you need to invest next, and so on. This is on the revenue growth. On the operational efficiency, this data will help you to better operate your business. It will allow you to be more efficient in the way you do business, in the way you operate. It will allow you to take better decisions that are based on data and eventually to become a data-driven organization that takes data, analyze it, and making decisions, deciding on next moves based on that. And for all of that, we 
provide you the AWS IoT architecture that include three different main parts. We spoke uh, on the previous session on connectivity and control services, and in this session we are going to focus on device software, which is the basic layer of our solution. Device software will allow you to build devices that operate at the edge and connect them very, very easily to the AWS IoT Cloud. Connectivity and control services allow you to manage and secure devices at scale. So this will be the central hub that will get all the information from all your devices out there and store it into the cloud. Last but not least, analytic services. This is the layer that will help you to take to take the data, analyze it, take uh, appropriate actions, update your devices based on this data. And this is what eventually create this circle of IoT when all the components are connected together. You're starting with device software that is sending data to the cloud, being processed there, then analyzed. And then based on this analysis, you can make decisions how to improve your devices, deploy these uh, new features, and then collect data, and so on and so forth. So, as I said before, this session is going to focus on device software. And the solution that we can provide you to build devices that operate at the edge and that can work with the AWS cloud at any scale. And to do that, we have several components that you should be aware of. First one is uh, FreeRTOS. I'm going to talk about FreeRTOS in a second. Uh, this is basically an operating system for microcontrollers. Uh, RTOS is a very popular operating system for microcontrollers. AWS FreeRTOS will allow you to install this operating system on your microcontroller, including the components needed to connect to other AWS resources like AWS IoT Cloud or AWS IoT Greengrass, which is a software that you install on top of uh, micro of uh, microprocessors and AWS IoT Greengrass I'm going to give you the details of what are the capabilities of this platform and what you can do with that in a few minutes. In addition to that, we have AWS IoT Device Tester. It will allow you to test your devices and to make sure that they can connect to the AWS IoT Cloud that they can run our software and uh, it will test your device to see if it's capable to do this connectivity for you so you can <coughs> test it in a very early stage and know exactly what are the capabilities of your specific device. And of course, there is the AWS IoT device, device SDK. SDK in many, in many languages that allow you to deploy this SDK on your devices and then write your own software and connect to the AWS Cloud. As I said before, it will save you a lot of time and effort in terms of uh, uh, preparing uh, your messages and formatting them in the right format, if it's MQTT or WebSockets or HTTP. Uh, it will handle all the security credentials, even uh, access secrets and many other things, and will leave you to work on the business logic and the exact value for your customers, your employees, and your business. So let's take a moment and talk a bit about FreeRTOS. So as I said before, FreeRTOS is an operating system uh, that can run on microcontrollers. It will allow you to get very easily some uh, very basic operations of IoT, like a local connectivity library will allow you to connect to other devices to gateways like uh, AWS IoT Greengrass. It can use Wi-Fi, it can use uh, low power Bluetooth or any other protocols that you might, uh, might use and are supported by FreeRTOS. It has cloud connectivity libraries that will allow you to connect directly to the AWS IoT cloud from your FreeRTOS deployments without going through a local, uh, through a local gateway. So if your edge devices have internet connectivity, you can go directly from this device to the AWS IoT Cloud, send your information to the cloud. Because they're usually very limited in processing, uh, you won't be able to do a lot of processing in these devices. So just sending the data and let the cloud process, analyze, and then send maybe commands to your microcontrollers to do changes. Security libraries are included as well. So just to make sure that all the communication, all the information you are sending is secure and that your devices can identify themselves to the, to the uh, other side, if it's uh, AWS uh, Greengrass or if it's uh, AWS IoT Core in the cloud. And 
over-the-air uh, over updates and code signing allow you to send updates over the air to your microcontrollers and make sure that uh, they are always up to date. Make sure that you are able to deploy new features, improve those devices with time. So this is free Atos. This is a tiny library, usually for very low power devices. And usually you take free Atos as your the end of the of the chain of your devices and uh, send this information to somewhere else to process it. This somewhere else can be AWS IoT Greengrass. So AWS IoT Greengrass is a software that extends AWS IoT Cloud to the edge. It will take many of the capabilities that I was talking about in the previous session. If you did not watch it, you are more than welcome to catch it on VOD and take the, those capabilities of AWS IoT Core and bring them to the edge. And this will help you to solve some of those challenges we've been talking about with the law of physics, economics, and law of the land by doing many of those actions locally. And there are several AWS IoT Greengrass foundational components that you should know about, and I'm going to talk about some of them in details. It starts with local messages and triggers. Then you have the local actions, data state, data in state sync, security, of course, to make sure all your connections are fully secured, local resource access, and over the air updates that will allow you to send updates to your AWS IoT Greengrass core, uh, update the functionality of it, versioning, security credentials, and many, many other things. So when we're talking about the different components, local messages uh, and triggers will allow you to replicate what we do when sending messages to AWS IoT Core the cloud locally. So it will allow you to send messages from different devices, microprocessors, sensors, into AWS IoT Greengrass locally without going out to the internet. Uh, it can support MQTT, PubSub, uh, allow Lambda functions uh, written in the cloud uh, to take and work and trigger and being triggered based on those messages. And uh, that allows you to do many of this communication locally without even reaching out to the cloud. So in case uh, you have uh, challenges uh, working locally, is a great solution and then you can sync back when the connectivity is coming back uh, online. Uh, local actions will allow you to carry local actions with uh, uh, event-driven Lambda functions uh, that are deployed locally to your devices. You can run uh, Lambda functions written in different languages, uh, Python, Node.js, C or Java. And uh, you can invoke those uh, functions uh, based on uh, actions, based on data coming, based on changes to the local uh, shadow updates and many other things. So once again, same functionality as you used to do in the cloud, but done locally without going out of your internal network. Data and state sync is a very important component. So as I said before, you can do a lot of things locally, but in many cases, you would like to take this data and eventually sync it to the cloud. Eventually, it can be after processing this data, after cleaning up this data, after deciding locally what should go to the cloud and what not, and uh, doing it when connectivity is available. So I'm going to give you an example in a few minutes of Rio Tinto, a mining company. And one of the challenges that inside the mine, there is no connectivity. But uh, when you go out, out of the mine, you get the connectivity back. You can keep working with your data. You can keep collecting the data. You can keep analyzing it and send it to the cloud only when connectivity is back. Security is, of course, a very important component, and uh, security is part of the components that you get uh, with AWS IoT Greengrass. And this allows you to authenticate uh, your devices to encrypt all the data uh, coming from your devices, both when you transmit it locally and when you're sending it to the cloud to store it there, to process and to analyze it there. Uh, certificates, TLS support, mutual authentication, everything that is needed to make sure that your entire infrastructure, your entire solution is secured end-to-end. -end. Another specific uh, feature of uh, Greengrass that is not available in the cloud is, of course, local resource access. So if you have local resources connected to your 
AWS IoT Greengrass uh, Hub, you can access those resources. Those resources can be cameras or storage if you want to store a lot of data locally. For example, we were talking earlier about the law of the land that you can't, st you can, you can't send to the cloud some of the medical information or private information of your customers. You can connect a local storage. It can be as big as you want into your AWS IoT Greengrass deployment and it, your data will be stored locally. You can access camera, other USB devices. You can even access GPUs to do local uh, local accelerated machine learning inferences and many other things so this is a great addition that obviously can't operate in the cloud but can definitely operate locally you should take this into account when designing your solution there are several aws iot greengrass enhanced capabilities uh, that you should know uh, aws iot greengrass can give you access to machine learning inference, I'm going to talk about it in a second. It has all kinds of connectors that uh, allow you to connect your devices to other sources. It has AWS Secret Manager, so you can manage your secrets in AWS, send them to your edge devices, and make sure that those secrets are kept in a place when other uh, pieces of software can't access them. Uh, it's a great alternative uh, to keeping the secrets inside the code. This is a solution that uh, many developers are using. Don't keep your secrets inside the code. Your code is usually shared in many different places, including uh, public repositories. Make sure that you keep secrets in the right location. In this case, AWS Secret Manager can really help you with that. Uh, it has container support. I'm going to talk about it in a second as well. And stream manager that allow you easily to manage all your streams, all your data collect, process uh, high volume data streams from edge devices into your hub and then take it to the cloud if needed. Let's talk for a second about machine learning uh, inferences. So machine learning inferences is a relatively new feature of AWS IoT uh, Greengrass. Uh, this is something that evolved with time and we see a lot of implementation of machine learning in edge devices. And in many cases you want your machine learning processes, machine learning inferences to run locally. If it's because of data privacy or because of speed and performance, so if you need to, uh, if you need immediately to identify a person or identify a, a, a malfunction in one of your machinery locally, you don't want to wait for this uh, image or for this information to travel all the way to the cloud being processed there and wait for an answer coming from the cloud, you want to do it locally, and AWS IoT Greengrass allow you to deploy machine learning models at the edge. It allow you to integrate those machine learning models with, AWS, with Amazon SageMaker, which is our machine learning uh, services. You can build your models, you can train your models in the cloud and then deploy them to the edge. It supports Apache MXNet and TensorFlow, so very common, very popular uh, machine learning uh, platforms and you can integrate those capabilities into the edge and make your edge smarter and make your processes uh, much faster. Of course, there are uh, other, cons other uh, considerations like cost, for example, we spoke about latency, but uh, in this case, you are not paying anything for doing machine learning inference at the edge. Another relatively new feature is container support. So it used to be, you used to be able to deploy code with AWS Lambda and run Lambda functions at the edge. Now you can use or reuse your containers and deploy your code using Docker containers at the edge. Uh, Docker containers has a lot of uh, advantages. You can reuse containers you already build in other places. You can uh, pack uh, application dependencies into relatively uh, small uh, containers and uh, deploy them to the edge and you can combine Lambda and containers, each one of them has uh, its, its own uh, pros and cons. So maybe for long running processes, containers will do a better job. Uh, something simple, something short, Lambda is probably a better solution and you can decide what is the best architecture for, architecture for your solution. So container support uh, is available now with AWS IoT Greengrass. I want to show you a customer story. It's actually a video that uh, shows a customer story of Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto is a mining company and uh, it has uh, all kinds of mines uh, all over the world. And they decided to use AWS IoT Greengrass to solve a very unique use case. So take a look at this video.
Everything here is big. A mine almost two miles wide. 250 tonne trucks. Welcome to the second largest boron mine in the world. But when everything is this big, it's the little things that can make a difference. Data on the mine's 20 trucks is collected and analysed. Sensors on the trucks detect bumps and movement, uploading what they find to the cloud. Amazon's Greengrass programme then takes over and returns its analysis, here in the form of a map showing how different routes and surfaces affect the tyres on these monster tippers. You can see a heat map here of our mine pit where it's green is a little bit smoother road and where you have the darker red and orange is a rougher road. So we're, we're able to monitor our road roughness and uh, dispatch our road grading crews to the appropriate areas so that we can optimize the work they're doing in the field. And ultimately that'll save tire wear on our haul trucks. And then there's the savings, another big attraction of using cloud services because Rio Tinto reckons it can save what the system costs multiple times over. Yes, in this case, just in rubber. You could possibly get up to maybe 40, 50 percent more life on a tire. So how much money is that for the people at home? So our tires cost about 40 to 50 thousand dollars. So 25 25 thousand dollars more out of the life of a tire is pretty good. So by using AWS IoT Greengrass, Rio Tinto were able to collect data from sensors on those trucks, and those sensors, some of those sensors are already there, but they placing a green grass device on each truck, and when this truck is going through this mine, it records all this information about the quality of the roads. And when the truck is coming back to surface and has has restored the uh, internet connectivity, it will send this information to AWS IoT, to AWS IoT in the cloud, process it there, and then create this kind of heat map that will let them know where they, sh they should dispatch their teams to fix those roads and save a lot of money in, in tiles. And this is a great implementation of AWS IoT Greengrass and a great implementation of IoT at the Edge in general. So I'm sure at this point you're asking yourself, uh, how do I quickly build a solution? customized to my exact business needs. So there are several ways you can start with AWS IoT in general, AWS IoT at the edge. You can always go to the AWS IoT solutions page. There is the, the URL uh, on this uh, slide. And uh, look at what we build for others. Look at what we build as demos and start from that. Look for a solution that is close enough to what you are trying to solve. And don't start from scratch. Just take this solution and evolve it to your exact needs. Another location that will help you to build your next uh, edge device uh, solution is to go and look at, the, at our AWS Partners device catalog. You have the, the URL here. We have more than 314 different devices that you can use that are designed to work with AWS uh, IoT, including our cloud and AWS IoT Greengrass, Free Autos, and other components. So if you are looking for a device you want to understand if this device can support IoT, AWS IoT out of the box, you're more than welcome to go to the Partners Device Catalog. By the way, you can install AWS IoT on many other devices that might not be in the catalog, uh, cheap boards that uh, you get from all kinds of websites. Uh, those devices were actually verified, and we know for sure that they are going to support different technologies based on what you're looking for. But obviously, I had the experience of installing uh, AWS uh, free autos on uh, ESP32 chips that I bought for $2 from, uh, from uh, eBay. So you're more than welcome to try this as well. This will save you some time, some effort. So make sure that you are aware of AWS Partners device catalog. Some of, our, some of those uh, partners that uh, provide the devices in this catalog are available in our, in our partner discovery zone in this event. So make sure you go and uh, talk to these uh, vendors, ask them questions if you have a need for those kinds of, kind of devices. So AMD, Intel are just two of them. Another great option 
To learn about uh, AWS uh, IoT is to take our training and certification courses. There are more than 25 free digital courses cover different topics of IoT, from analytics to device management to AWS IoT Greengrass. Uh, in depth, what we just spoke in this session, and you are more than welcome to go to these sessions, learn yourself, and get some knowledge about how to operate and how to build those type of solutions. I encourage you to try AWS IoT. It's really simple. You can start really, really fast. The tools are there to help you to transform your business, and we are, and we and, and our partners are there to help you. So just think about a problem you have and think how can you solve this problem with AWS IoT. Thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to give me feedback about this session. There's going to be a survey just uh, after this session. Uh, you are more than welcome to contact me on Twitter. If you have any comments, any questions, I'm available. Once again, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next sessions. Bye.